Hey, I'm Mark Rhodes and welcome back to my workshop. In this episode, I'm going to be talking about one of my favorite topics, which is resin printing. In particular, I want to talk about drain holes inside of your resin prints and why you need them. So keep watching. Before we get started, I'd like to do a quick disclaimer. It's important to keep in mind here that what I'm presenting is only my opinion and it comes from me spending a great deal of time and experience printing with a reg resin printer on a regular basis. Now that's out of the way, let's talk about drain holes. Drain holes are a necessary part of printing with resin and in my personal opinion, they're at least as important as your support structures are when you're thinking about how to orient, slice and print your model. The core question here is, why do we need drain holes? Drain holes are probably a misnomer, as I think they're probably more important to releasing pressure on the inside of the print than they are just for resin drainage. And this really comes down to the concept of having hollows inside of our prints. With resin printing, we absolutely need hollows inside of our prints, which saves us print time, minimizes how much expensive resin we're going to use on every single print, and also makes our prints safer by minimizing how much uncured resin could be inside of the print. When we print a hollow, however, we need to give some consideration to what is happening inside of the printer while we're printing. And to help with this, I'd like to explain with a demonstration. This is my resin vat. It's a PDMS silicon vat from my Piopoli Moai. And while it is a little bit different from a FEP vat, the principles here are really the same, so don't worry too much about the difference. This vat is gonna be filled with liquid. In this case, I'm just using water. When I print, this is the resin that my print bed is going to be submerged into. I also have this cup, and this represents an object being printed. If I place this object against the bottom of the vat, look what happens. It sticks. And the reason behind this sticking is pretty straightforward. As we try to pull the print away from the surface, the density of the air inside the cup decreases marginally, which means there's external pressure sticking this cup down and trying to force it to stick to the surface. And this is what's happening every single time you print a layer. Your printer lifts up, touches back down, prints a layer and then tries to lift again. And when it does that, each time it creates suction. And that suction is created in the internal cavity of your print. While that in itself is not bad, it can lead to supports separating from prints, layer shifts, or even a print failure if the force required to pull the model away from the base is going to be greater than that that the supports or the model can actually tolerate. So how do we alleviate this internal pressure? And that's where holes come into play. A single hole is enough to stop the pressure from building up internally. A hole will allow us to equalize the atmosphere inside of the print with that of outside of the print and thus completely remove any suction forces from occurring. Here is the same cup, except this time you might notice that there are two holes drilled into it. And look what happens if I put it in. It comes away from the bottom with no problem at all. So now you can see why holes are necessary to connect your hollows in your prints and you understand why. But I think there might still be a few questions you have on this topic, for instance. Question number one, where should I put my drainage holes? And the answer to that one I think is pretty easy. Put your holes in the lowest portion of the print you can to the print bed in a location where they're obscured. If you're printing a bust such as this one, put the holes on the very bottom. If this is the orientation of my print bed, you'll see the holes are right at the very bottom corners. Question number two is, should I put a hole in the top of my model as well? Well, in my opinion, the only real reason to have a hole at the top is to drain resin. If you can think of this as an inverted print, resin would have to get pulled in here and drain out the bottom because as this print is inverted, it will act somewhat like a cylinder until finally the top of that internal hollow here is filled, trapping resin in. Uncured resin will seep down from the insides of the walls over time very slowly, and because the hollow is now sealed by this hair, there is nowhere it can go. It can't be drained through original holes because gravity is holding that resin down towards the bottom. So if you're concerned about this, you could potentially put a hole in the very top of your print. And unfortunately, this is easier said than done. 
if you put a hole in the very top of your print, then it's probably going to be quite visible in the print. In this case, it would ruin the magnificent hair that Arnold has sculpted into him. So how about just not having a top hole? And when you need to clear out the resin, turn it upside down, and during the clearing process, the resin will flush out. That uncured resin inside won't amount to much and can be easily washed out during the post-processing through the two holes in the very bottom of the print. Question number three is how big should these holes be? This is actually a difficult one to determine. If you're using a laser-based printer like mine, which is the Moai, then your resins are very viscous. If you're using a projected LCD style printer like a Photon or a Mars, then your resin is going to be much less viscous. And that's important because the more viscous a resin is, the larger the hole you're going to need to clean it out effectively. For projected style printers, I'd recommend at least two holes of two millimeters. For laser style printers, I would recommend two or more holes of at least 3.5 millimeters. My personal preference is to make use of five millimeter holes wherever I can because it makes my cleanup and post-processing that much easier. Question number four is, Mark, I'm not printing a hollow, but I'm printing a vase or some kind of convex style arrangement. Do I still need a hole? Unfortunately, yes you do, as this is evidenced by when we tried to print our cup. Even though this isn't a proper hollow and has a cavity at the top, suction forces are still going to take place, so you ne still need to put in a couple of print holes. So that brings us to the end of the video, and I'll do a quick summary. My personal recommendations are that you make two holes in your resin prints, making sure that they're at least two millimeters in diameter, but as large as you can comfortably make them, and as close to the bottom of the print bed as possible. If you're doing this, I think you're giving yourself the best chance of success when you are printing with resin. Thank you for watching. If you have any suggestions, thoughts, or comments on how best to place the holes in resin prints, or if there's something you'd like to see me cover in the future, then please drop me a comment down below. As always, if you enjoyed what I'm talking about here, hit the like and subscribe buttons, and I'll be seeing you in the next video.